explain this uh, discourse in English, but if you have any doubt, okay, uh, just uh, ask me, I will translate it or in French or in Catalan or in whatever language is needed. Uh, what I will do now, okay, is uh, I will not show you uh, the expert view of the geothermal energy. So if, if you expect to have kind of the details of how it's working, uh, how the technology is it's actually working in the market, ETC, you will not find it here right now. And there is a, a purpose on that, because uh, uh, we will explain it tomorrow in more details. We will have a more professional view of the geothermal energy. But uh, I, would, I would like to show you how to explain it in a simple way. Because I think, okay, I would say that as a reminder, that the, the target groups that we are uh, facing is uh, decision maker, general public, even I have to say, it's technical workers, sometimes they have, you have to uh, talk to them in, in simple words. And, and it's important to explain the overview. What is important, what is not, which are the barriers, for example, of this technology. Uh, this, for example, this presentation is normally what I, the one I used to, to explain geothermal energy uh, to the general public. So it's a template you can use if you have to, this, if you want to, for example, the workshop you will do in, in Montpellier or in Toulouse, to the general public you can also use this one if you like it. If not, at least you can, you, I can uh, give you the PowerPoint template and then you can uh, add or subtract any slide you want. So this is something that is really important for me. Uh, I, I want to emphasize again decision makers. It's really important because we will see that one of the barriers is administrative barriers. So it's important to show them which is the potential of this technology in all new region. Uh, the savings, okay, that will in CO2 uh, in, uh, economically. So it's really important to explain that. So we have to avoid using enthalpy. GSHP or something like that. It's something that we use. Uh, it's a low temperature because we have to differentiate it. We will see later in uh, to different other kinds of geothermal energy. And it's, it's used to save energy and money. And it's also good to, to uh, say and to uh, <coughs> this word money because it's also really important to show to the general public that it's uh, a technology that will help them to save money. So it's okay for you if I explain it in this way. I think it's also interesting to just to look at the concepts and, 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 and uh, know how to explain it to the general public. Okay. Uh, if you see that sometimes uh, I got blocked, it's because of course I have to use a, a very simple vocabulary. And normally I use Spanish or Catalan, so I, I will have to rethink in English. I, I'm used to doing this in Catalan, not in English, but uh, I think. Okay. First, the slides. Uh, of course, the introduction. What we will do in this session. Okay. You can see these points. Okay. They they are not exactly what we will do. In fact, we do not have to do this. Okay. Normally, uh, I use this to scare a little bit the the assistants. Okay. To say, oh my God, I, I think that I will uh, get lost in this information, or I, I just uh, inspire myself in, in the wrong course. But this is a very good uh, strategy. I, I use it often in, in my presentation because in this way you scare a lot of people and say, oh my god, in, in, in the Eclairage and Lightning I also use this, this kind of uh, introduction and then I say, no, don't worry. In fact, we'll do this, what we will really do is in the day, they relax, it's like a sort of icebreaker as well. And then they say, oh, okay, I will understand it because it's, this is the same level as me. So normally uh, I think it's uh, a little bit the fear that they would have also decision makers or other kind of uh, workers, uh, even uh, general public or citizens, uh, they will talk about something that they will not understand because the vocabulary, the technicity uh, implicit in the, in the, in the subject uh, would be a barrier. So we have to tackle this one and explain things at the same level. Okay? And it's really good to have, a, not to try to be proud of uh, technical knowledge, but it's really important to put this aside and explain it in a very simple way. So today what we will do, of course, let's introduce ourselves a little bit. 
just uh, as we are talking to geothermal, and it's geo, you need, we will have to explain a little bit how it is made. Maybe Daniel, as he is a geologist, he will be, uh, criticize me later because we will do it in a very simple way. Okay, then we will have a look at the possibilities of the geothermal energy because there are different temperatures and different ways that we can use this energy. A very important one is this one, it's how a heat pump is working. People doesn't know how it works and it's uh, the main uh, uh, the, the main uh, element in the geothermal that is uh, making it really, really efficient, the heat pump. And we will explain in a very simple way and with some examples that it will help how to do it. And then of course we will apply these uh, several uh, topics to uh, an example of case of a very simple house in, in a city here in Porta and we will see what is necessary, not the related, related to permissions or something like this, but uh, what will happen to this house if it has gas and electricity right now to heat water and uh, for heating and air conditioning and we replace it uh, by, uh, by using a, a geothermal uh, installation. Finally, if you have any questions or doubts, uh, I will welcome will, will to answer that. So first, it's important to introduce at the beginning of the project, but uh, I think, I don't know if the University of, uh, of Baleares is considered like a non-profit organization. Uh, I think it's important when, when we introduce ourselves, for example, in Eco Surveys, we are also explaining the other topics uh, or other things that we do. But it's quite interesting to say, hey, we are not related to the industry of heat pumps or to the industry of that we don't have any economical interest to implement we will not earn more money if the geothermal energy is implemented in this case because then we are presenting ourselves as a third party that is not involved and then we have more credibility to explain it okay? also for the decision makers that's really important for this because okay, I do not mean anything if, you, if, if this is implemented or not. But it's interesting to say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Not more or less, I'm not just a lobby uh, of the Heat Pump Association. Then, uh, well, and of course, this is something that they already, they already talked about it, so I just keep it. And let's go to the, to the simple step of how uh, Earth is made. Uh, very basically, okay, just if I'm wrong, that Earth it has several layers. Okay. One important thing is to make people participate in the workshop. This is something that you already know. Okay. For example, uh, well, here is something that normally does not appear, but you have normally the, the surface is called the lithosphere. sphere. Okay. That it's uh, it's uh, rigid. It's not. It can move, but not uh, a, a lot because. It's it's really hard to say, right? it's really hard. But then, uh, below this, this layer, there is something that it's not liquid, but it's plastic, it can, it's like more or less uh, something like a glue or something that can move a little bit. So it, has, uh, it can change, it can make some pressure. I mean, then you have another kind that is really rigid, and then we have the internal one. And then I ask you, uh, digging, in, or uh, you know that we can, we can uh, drill and dig into the, into the underground. Where do you think that we achieve to, to dig? I think. Do you think that we reach the mesosphere or maybe the asthenosphere? What do you think that we reach at the distance layers? For example, you, uh, Nicola, that you are looking at me. So, 
what we will do, what will we use, the, the things that people already know, or at least easy to explain. Do you know how the convection air movement is stopped? Do you know how a radiator at home, how the radiator is working? It's the air, when it's, it's, it's warm, what it does goes up, okay? Then when it's cooling, it goes down. This is called a convection movement. This is the principle of working of a simple radiator. Air is uh, hot, then it goes up, it's cooling, it's going down, and then again and again. The point is to explain that this is also happening below our feet. That there is this part that's really hot, and this part is less hot. So here we say, hey, we have this plastic movement. So it's also happening here. Okay, and there are several points that here uh, you can reach better the, the, the surface, so we, we can we can dig and maybe have more more temperature there than maybe uh, in other kind of places. Okay, but this is something that we explain to take the, the temperatures are moving. Something is moving to the lower face. Okay. Another thing it's interesting is say, okay, what happens when? We have these hot spots, for example, and they are uh, mixed with water. If you know that there is underground water, okay, and what happens then? If this water is uh, between two um, uh, impermeable uh, layers, then you can have, of course, uh, uh, like an oven or something, I think, that you are warming up this water, and depending on the temperature, are also in the pressure because here you see that this water is going down and this also you have you can have uh, high pressure and high temperature water and then you have this kind of geysers and, and geothermal wells as well. Okay? This is also happening in the in the earth. So more or less you have explained how earth is made that there is uh, it's hot inside and this uh, temperature can reach the surface sometimes. Okay. You will see that this is something that uh, it will change Later, because we will, we will explain that our technology is not working on those principles. But people, <coughs> normally what knows is this. So after that, which are the possibilities of the geothermal? And this here, normally I put those videos, okay? That uh, it's like a, a, an emphasis. Let me check. <coughs> okay, and here I explain, okay, people when imagine Geothermal energy, they imagine this. What is that? A volcano, a lava, magma, a lot of heat. Okay? People, when they think geothermal energy, they are thinking about this. So, do I need a volcano on the right feet to uh, take the advantages of the geothermal energy? Uh, we will say, I will say no. But uh, it's good to think, I do uh, show that, okay, uh, normally people are just. Mm, thinking about this and then they think ah, I cannot apply this technology in my home because I don't have I don't know here in Catalonia we have some some places in the north that there are several uh, spas uh, where they are using hot water from the underground. So a lot of people the culture is that is that they think that uh, it's only uh, for uh, heating use you can, you can only heat things and that you need this on the earth. So this is one barrier we have in the in the general public. Then Another thing that they are imagining when they are uh, using the... Let me show you if I can put this down. Do you, do you remember people when they think, oh my god, I have to, to, to drill and, 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 and put a, a, a well just back in my, in my backyard? They think, oh my god, uh, here in Catalonia we have a lot of problems with the, a, gas, um, a gas reservoir we have going in. The city that is called the, the Castor, and they are it's, it's shaking, the, the, it's creating a little movement and, and earthquakes. So they imagine, oh my god, I will have these kind of problems also when they are they are putting me uh, a well uh, in my back of me because they, they will reach, I don't know, a gas, uh, I don't know, ball in the, under the, under the, in the subsoil or something like this. And yet, some people are still thinking that there is this kind of problem when they are deep, deep in the subsoil. So, uh, of course, I'm using this, uh, this uh, movie because I like it, but also because uh, you are 
getting um, more the you are getting the, uh, into their skin. They are it's, it's a, a good feeling you have uh, between them and, and you when you are showing this. And then when you show them, you say, hey, forget about everything you have seen here. Forget it. It's not what is your thought. It's something. Hey, this is what you thought. Now let's see what it is. Okay, it's a before and after. So, one of the possibilities of the geothermal, you already know it is. Okay, we know that there is this lake, this underground water, as I showed you before. The hot uh, magma or the, the uh, high pressure, uh, high pressure water and a high, pre uh, and a high temperature. If you put a well here, you can reach this underground water in high pressure, high temperature, and then extract this water, put it in a turbine and a generator and produce electricity. Okay. At the beginning they just do it in this way and then the steam was going out and that was uh, creating some problems because of course the, the, the water level was descending and then also the plant uh, with the, the ground that happens also in Iceland at the beginning. So you need to condense the water and to fill again the underground. This is for the uh, production of electricity. Okay, this is something that you need this uh, magma. Okay, if it, another application. It's really simple. It's of course maybe at uh, no one one thousand meters. I have already one hundred twenty degrees or one hundred. So if I just put a pipe and then uh, I. I uh, recover this water that is coming from the, the, the return of this type, I can keep water free because I just can uh, put the, the water, uh, cool uh, water here as the subsoil is 100 degrees, it's coming 80 degrees for example, so I can keep. Once you explain this, because this is just an introduction, uh, you can say, hey, those technologies are expensive because you have to go deep, okay? They can only done in specific places, as you said, in some uh, places that uh, this uh, heat is easily recovered. Okay, but it's not what it's about the low temperature geothermal energy. This is not corresponding to what we want to show you, because this is what you think that it's geothermal. Now we will uh, open your eyes and show you what truly really is. So we we explain. One of the principles of the, of the geothermal, which is uh, in the subsoil temperature, okay, this is the third application. The, the first meters, the temperature of the subsoil, it's uh, constant, it's more or less the same. It can change, it can shift a little bit, but it's normally equal to the annual average temperature of the, of the surface, more or less. And it's like here, it's 18 degrees, okay. So we will have at the, at the beginning at this 200, uh, 100 meters, we, have, we will have this temperature. So in our case it's 80 degrees, here in, in uh, Fabi also we have this, this temperature. And uh, we just find that we will, we will show them why this is good for us. Okay? Because we don't still, of course, what we will expect, hey, with 18 degrees I cannot either heat nothing, cool nothing, something like neutral is like okay what we will do with 18 degrees it's something that uh, it's not useful at, at all so just keep in mind that we have these 18 degrees here constantly we will see that it will uh, change a little bit but for now it's something constant why we cannot explain what is really uh, good for us because first we have to explain how a heat pump is working and this is something that it's uh, a challenge a little bit because it's something technical but it's quite easy. Uh, again, we have to uh, explain the principles of motion. So how a heat pump is uh, working, it's, uh, it's two basic physical principles. It's a, a gas. Whenever it's compressed, it heats up. Okay? The temperature is right. An example, when you're pumping air into the tile, uh, you are, you are feeling that it's getting hot and it's not because of the friction it's because the gas is compressed and it's getting angry okay, normally I, I express it with motion, it's getting angry so it's, it's like uh, uh, 
uh, fighting with uh, other molecules of air, so it's, it's getting hot and hot. And the other principle is that a gas, whenever it expands, it's, it's cooled down. Okay? It's really easy to explain. And normally I use this, this video. Uh, it's not actually the, the, the physical principle, but it's, uh, I, I explain it, I, I lie to them. <coughs> I, lie. I have to admit it. It's like, this is a beer, okay? and it's in the, in the freezer. And now, as the bubbles of the gas are expanding, okay, because it was at zero degrees, but it's not, it was not uh, frozen, when the bubbles are expanding, they are uh, decreasing the temperature of the beer, and then it's freezing the beer. So this is the principle of, the, of one of the, of the, of the, of the, of the thing. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, okay, at the beginning, the liquid it was at zero degrees, it's just an example, but it's something that you can, you can it helps to explain. As the, he uh, shakes the beer, then the bubbles appear, and the bubbles are just what gas extending. As it extends, it's cooling down the liquid from zero to minus one, and then it's freezing. This is something to put, okay, an example of uh, how this principle is work. So, what is the great advantage of heat pumps? Why we are using it? Heat pumps, but I always explain, it's something that it does not generate heat or cool. It's something that moves temperatures. It's something that's really important to explain. Something okay. If you do heat or hot or whatever, you need to cool something else. It's something. Uh, normally, I use this example. It's imagine two rooms with a, a, a door in the middle. It's closed. Okay. You have one room uh, hot. 30 degrees and one room uh, cold, uh, 10 degrees. Okay. Now imagine what will happen if I open the door. If I have one room with 30 degrees and another one with 10 degrees. If I open the door in the middle, what will happen with the temperature? It's a question, and actually you have to answer. <laughs> you have a room with 30 degrees. You have one room with 10 degrees, the same size, and you open the door in the middle, the temperature is good. Okay, there will be a balance. Okay, the, the room which is hot will decrease the temperature to 20, the room which is at 10 will increase to 20. This is a, a natural balance. Okay, the heat pump, what it's doing, it's unbalance the equation. So, if you have two rooms at the same temperature, you will increase the temperature of one and you will decrease the temperature of the other. Okay? This is the what is the principle of the heat pump. It moves the temperature. So you will have uh, a room with a high temperature and we have another room with a low temperature. Uh, what is a good thing then of this? Because we are not truly generating uh, any kind of thermal energy, we are just moving. Okay? We are moving the temperature. This is very good. Why? Because with less energy, we can produce more thermal energy. Normally, I don't use any uh, units. I don't use kilowatt power or something. I just say, imagine that you have one uh, energy unit. Okay, with this one energy unit, I can produce three thermal energy. One and when I would say, imagine I have one uh, electricity unit, for example, then I can produce three thermal. So it multiplies for free. I have a, a performance of 300%. This is what I say here. And then this is um, measured by the COP. And normally in air conditioning, it's uh, 2, 3, okay, more or less. So it means that with one, I can do 2 or 3. With a gas boiler, with one uh, gas unit, I can produce 0 0.58 thermal energy or 0 0.97. Okay, so here they can already compare which is the. If you if you if you want to comment something, a, a, a standard gas boiler, not uh, generation. Ouais, ça peut être très important, je veux dire, ça semble de la magie. 
Mais le principe, parce que tu dis, comment c'est possible que je multiplie à mon énergie Le point, c'est que je suis en, en, réellement, je ne je la, je la produis pas, je, la, je suis en train de, de déplacer les températures parce que j'ai besoin de refroidir quelque chose pour chauffer quelque chose. C'est un truc qu'on va voir après. Parce que la, la bombe à chaleur, ce qu'il fait, c'est déplacer des températures. En, euh, par exemple, c'est que, ce que j'ai dit avant de, 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 de chambre. Non. Tu vas avoir une chambre chaude, une chambre froide. Ça, c'est ça, c'est beaucoup plus et efficient que de ne pas que de chauffer euh, directement la, la chambre que tu veux chauffer. Okay. Ah, donc, si euh, je vous entends, si elle euh, pompe, ça nécessite moins d'énergie que si je faisais juste un chauffage pour arriver à 30 degrés Oui, bah, pourquoi Parce que tu as besoin, mais avec un, une contre que tu dois réfroidir quelque chose pour... pour, pour ah, Ici, un, un, je n'utilise pas, mais normalement, il y a, je ne sais pas si je l'ai mis, il y a un graphique qui est très, euh, très utile, je, je le dirais. C'est euh, si tu prends, si tu fais 4, 4 kW de chauffage, par exemple, tu en prends 1 de l'électricité, mais 3 de l'environnement. Et ça, c'est beaucoup plus efficient. Euh, normalement, c'est 2-3 fois dans So, an example of how it's working in a normal standard heat pump, okay? Because you will see, this is one of the, our barriers, the, 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 the technology that Geothermal is having problems to fight or to, to win, it's aerothermal. So the same technology, but just throwing away the, the energy to the air. So, this is something that it's like, um, you will see it's a little bit interactive. Uh, imagine that you have one, one thing that uh, it's compressed the air. Okay? Here you have a circuit with a gas. You don't explain that it's a refrigerant, it's just gas. Uh, then this gas is compressed. And what the gas is doing when it's compressed? It's heating. Okay? It's, so you will have this gas, for example, at 40 degrees. We are in summer. Okay? Okay, so. If you are going, this is an air conditioning, if you are going now to the exterior that is at 30 degrees, okay, this, this, there is a fan with a radiator, like a car radiator, so it's, it's a good example to say. This gas, here you will have hot air. Uh, a good example also is when, when you are crossing in front of a bar, you know that there are have the, the air conditioning, you have all the, all the fans with uh, hot air that's uh, uh, coming to your case then this gas is going to 35 degrees. And what we will do with this gas? Of course, if we want to, if we want to, uh, to cool the interior, that is 27, if this 35 is not enough, we have to expand it. There is an expansion valve. So what a gas does when it's expanded, it cools 10 degrees. And now we can uh, cool the interior. Okay, because afterwards this gas will return at 15 degrees and again it will be compressed, it will rise up to 40 degrees and again it will go down to 35 degrees. Here is, it is, uh, it's, um, it's good to explain that we need those because imagine that I just compress and expand. If I just compress and expand without transferring the energy to the interior, to the exterior, okay, I will have always the same temperature. If I compress, it will rise up at 40. If I expand, I will have 20. If I again compress, I will have again 40. So, what is the point? If I, once I compress the gas, I can uh, decrease its temperature a little bit. This difference of temperature is important because if I uh, expand it at 40 degrees, I will reach uh, not 10, but maybe 20 degrees, and it's not enough. But with this, I will expand it and reach a lower temperature. Okay, but this is something that it's it's just for culture. It's, the point is that this is how it's working. 
okay? You can you have to explain that it's uh, a temperature minimum, it's more efficient. Then we can do the winter mode, okay? And explain exactly the same thing, but uh, this is interior, okay? Because uh, people normally you, you, uh, know the air condition. Then you have to explain that the heat pump is something that is, does the same but for heating and for cooling. This is interior, so you are uh, getting hot air from here, but you need always to, uh, of course, to remove uh, uh, cool, cool air from this side, from the exterior. Okay, and the cycle is exactly the same. But now we have to explain what is the problem and, and make the connection with the, the first principle that we said regarding the subsoil at the same temperature. What's the problem? What happens? Okay. What when the um, exterior temperature is lower than the one that you need to uh, to cool, like to heat this uh, this gas? Okay. So what happens when here now we have five degrees? instead of 20 or 50, okay? This is a problem. Why? Because if here I have my gas at 10 degrees and the exterior is at 5 degrees, here I don't have uh, my gas at 50. It, it, it didn't take the, 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 the warmth from the, the exterior. So when I compress it, it will not uh, be at 40, maybe less. So I, I will not be able to push Okay, to move the temperature from the exterior to the interior and, and warm the interior. So this is not working. Okay? That's why okay, it's important the same temperature in the subsoil. Because why? Because here we always have 18 degrees. Okay? Instead of throwing away this hot or cool air to the exterior and try to a, uh, exchange energy with the uh, air, we can use it and put it on the ground. Okay? And we have always 18 degrees. And this is why it's so, um, so efficient. So, as I said, the heat pump is like an air conditioner, but it's a modifier. So, when we, don't, we want to apply it geothermal at home, it's like an air conditioning because it's something that people already know and it's not a complicated system. Okay? And this is a very important point, it's just the same technology. But this heat point, it's not throwing, not uh, uh, giving away the energy that we are throwing to the exterior as we saw because it's like we always have to move to have if we pull something, we have to warm something up. Okay? This is uh, keep it instead in the subsoil. Right? It's like, okay, we have always this 18 degrees. So this problem with the exterior temperature is not happening. And the mm, thing is that, as it's uh, normally constant, we will see later that it's not really constant. And it's, uh, it's, you can adjust the heat pump to work in a perfect nominal uh, function. I mean, it's like optimized. So this is something that uh, is really important to tell. And it's very important, you can use it in any kind of places in, in a market. Like you can say because sometimes, of course, it's not uh, you have something below and you cannot uh, drill it or something like this. But you don't need any volcano, you don't need magma, you don't need anything that we saw that, uh, before. It's something that is feasible. Okay? One thing that you can also explain is, uh, of course, when we're using a heat pump, we are giving away this energy uh, when, when we are uh, cooling the building, we are warming up the environment and uh, it's, it's shifting when it's uh, the other way around. Imagine that this energy that you are giving away to the air, you could keep it. And when, where we will keep it? Here, in our feet. It's like a huge tank of energy. We can keep this energy out in, in, in the underground. So this is the principles of the of the of the geothermal energy. Which kind of more or less because they, they have to know which kind of uh, of uh, geothermal energy you have. You have vertical geothermal. That is like okay, you just drill and you put uh, with a single U pipe uh, 
that is like here. You put the, the pipes and then you can exchange this energy with the underground using the vertical uh, rope. Or you can use the horizontal uh, solution that it's, uh, you need more surface, surface at all, because of course you need more space. Here you have all this space underground because it's like uh, 100 meters. Okay? And here we will have this kind of volume, but horizontally, so we will need more surface. These are mainly the two, um, well, this is what we explain to the general public. Here we don't, no, we don't um, explain the, the open loop uh, system, because we can use it also the water. So, then like to explain them how this is installed. We show them some videos from the installation we have here. And this is a good resource because here we can see some pictures that they, we will see it later there. But uh, uh, we will also raise another good point that it's the, the uh, visual impact. So, so this is uh, the work we have here. Okay. And uh, one question is, here we have seven wells, okay, at 100 meters. And this is something really good because we say that the other uh, options are expensive because the, deep, uh, as the deeper you, you drill, the more expensive it is, linear you know. So uh, with 100 meters, it's, it's cheaper and you can have also this installation at uh, a very economical, uh, economical price. So here what we are doing is really, okay. In the next videos, I will show you how they are um, getting down and then when they are removing the pipes. Okay? This is just a, a drill that is turning. We will see this kind of technologies tomorrow. Okay. okay. And here, for example, we'll see what is happening when they have to go deeper because. You see, they have some sections. So here there are some clamps. They are, they are getting the top of the, of the underground pipe. So then, here you have the header, okay? And now we will put another section, okay, of the drill. And you have the chance to look at this one using your words, okay? So here there is two clamps, in fact. Here now it's getting the, 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 the position. They remove the, the the wire, and then you will see the beginning. Here it's only uh, spinning this one. So now those two sections are together, and finally now it's uh, they are getting together the two other sections. So now it's a whole piece, and they can go down again and drill. Okay, this is a, a rotational um, driller. You, there are other other kind of drills, but a machine drill. Okay, and now it's getting again and going deeper. Yes, yes. And then how do you remove it? Here it's easier to, to see it. Okay, here it's pulling out one section, okay? Then they have a magnet here, and they have all uh, again two clamps. Okay, so what they will do is just the first clamp is uh, pinching, and then they are removing these two sections. Then this clamp will also uh, get off this pipe, and they will also spin the head up, and now they can remove it, and then they insert again the other uh, the other section. Pull it again. All the time. One thing is really important. How much time do you think that they got? Uh, for example, here we have seven wells with 100 meters. How much time do you think that they that they use to install this uh, these wells here? It's like seven wells, 100 meters. How much time? Two weeks. Two weeks. Veronique, do you have any guess?
Come? Sì, sì, sì. 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 And this is something important because normally you, know, you, 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 you expect, you expect to have more time to this. Like, oh my god, uh, for a month I would have some these machines here drilling and having noise. And having, but it's quite fast depending on the soil. That's the point. Here we have sand and other, other we have another kind of, yeah, yeah, this is. This technology, for example, it's, uh, with two hours you can have like 30 meters more or less this kind of drillers, okay? Another uh, important point is how this, uh, how this ends. I mean, once you have everything... Uh, <coughs> once you have the wells done, what you see is just this. And this is something that people know. It's like gardening types. It's, it's like when you have a garden and you have the... Uh, to use water to, uh, for the plants. You normally have this kind of pipes, this pipes is polyethylene. I don't know, I don't say this name. But this is something quite... And then you, you put just the, the, again, the soil on top of it, and you will, you will see later how it's in, something invisible. And this is another, another good point. Then you, you will see just the, this is what you see from the wells. And this is something really interesting because other renewable energies, they have a, a huge uh, impact, visual impact, but not geothermal. Geothermal is quite invisible. Why? Because here you will put just a heat pump, it's like a box, and that's it. You have your clean energy installation without any impact. This is for, for example, for architects, and it's really uh, interesting for them. So, yes, this is the, what we say, the Apulato. This is the concentration of all pipes of the wells. We have seven. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? Inlet and outlet. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Then we will use what? A heat pump. Okay? These wells are going to a heat pump. But another important point we have to explain to the colleague is how we will distribute this energy. Because we cannot use these kind of radiators anymore. These radiators are using the high temperatures, like 80 degrees, 60 degrees. Okay? The heat pump works in 40 degrees, more or less. So we cannot use this. We, we have to explain them also to, uh, that they will have to change it with one, with uh, heating floors, for example, in Parapalli also we have one, splits, fan coils, okay, or there is also uh, uh, what we call low temperature radiators. It's like the same kind of radiators, but with more surface, you need more surface to heat. So these are the, the different solutions you have right now, more or less, to be able to distribute this heat into your house, okay. So, we have a case study. Uh, I will go past. This is a house, 200 meters. In fact, we will just use uh, the HVAC for 81 meters square meters with four tenants. We use those numbers to, to those figures to uh, calculate the, the thermal needs. Okay. But the point is what it's really interesting is okay, they are expanding this quantity of energy, okay, to heat, cool, and for the hot water, right? So they are using 18,000 kilowatts hours, whatever. This is something that you have to spend. This is what you pay in gas in electricity. The investment. Very simple ways to explain the investment for a, for a geothermal energy. More or less, uh, one. 1,400 euros per kilowatt. Today, if the heat pump is 20 kilowatts, then you will expect more or less 30,000 30, euros. Okay. In this case, as we need something with uh, one, uh, 11 kilowatts, okay, we will spend 
15,000 uh, euros plus uh, taxes. What happens? The government, it's given the funds here in Ukraine, they, they, they uh, gave uh, uh, two years ago uh, 1,400 euros per kilowatt with a maximum of 30% of the total cost. So what does it mean? That, that your investment finally will be 10,000 euros plus the VAT. Which will be the savings, okay? Now we are uh, talking in euros, in money. It's what people are expecting from this technology. This, those people, they were uh, the current tariff, they were spending one, uh, well, 1,500 euros per year in gas and 1,700 euros per year in electricity. What will happen after the installation is done, after the re renovation, they will just pay 800 euros in electricity for heating. 300 euros in electricity for cooling and hot water. So in the total they will have like more or less 2,000 euros per year of savings. More or less this investment will be recovered in five years. Why? Because they were used in, it was an old house with a lot of, uh, of uh, heating uh, needs. But it's something that you, more or less you can say always oh, it's below 10 years. Okay, under 10 years. It's something that you can recover. Tomorrow we will see that there are financial uh, tools that they will have help the implementation of this technology because it's like, an, 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 you know what ESCOs are? Uh, energy services companies? Well, it's, it's like uh, companies that they are uh, paying the initial investment in return of the percentage of the savings that you are producing, okay? And that's it, that's the, the workshop for, for I would say, uh, an easy way to explain to your film. And if you have any remark or comment, I will be glad to, to hear of it. Tout à l'heure, il y a un slide où tu présentes euh, la génération d'électricité. Il y a des cas euh, qui existent, euh, tu peux me parler de quoi là-dessus C'est une chose que normalement je ne vais pas expliquer plus parce que ce n'est pas la technologie que je veux expliquer. Mais en Islande, dans les pays nord, il y a beaucoup de ces installations. Et vous avez un bon exemple, un bon exemple, un bon exemple, un bon exemple. Par exemple, l'Islande, le premier, c'était sans retour of the underground water and they had a problem that it was uh, falling down. On this side now? Yes, 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 there are. There is a map, I think, with uh, installa different installations uh, uh, that you can, you can use. But not, it, what I explained is not uh, feasible for houses or for building. You cannot put a plant of geothermal energy uh, in front of your building to produce energy for your needs. This is what but the low temperature from home, yes, you can do it. So this is the point I want to focus on. It. Something is complicated, it's hard to do, it's expensive, but the technology that we are presenting is it's cheaper and you can do it uh, almost everywhere. That's what I want to focus on. It's like something difficult, expensive, uh, hard, not feasible, but what we said, it's, uh, it has all the advantages.